It's the show you've been asking for. A full hour featuring your favorites from Live PD. They're taking your questions live. It all starts right now. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this special edition of the show. Tonight, a Live PD reunion. For those of you who never watched Live PD on A&E, where we followed police officers in real time, well, wait, are there really any of you out there who never watched Live PD? Anyway, we're going to check in with my cohorts and some of the officers from the hit show, see what they've been up to, take a look back, and later, I'll be providing an update on moving forward. I even wore my snug sweater to make everyone feel toasty and at home. Before we go to Richland County and talk to some of the fan favorites like the Brown brothers, Garrow and Danny, they're not really brothers, and Addie Perez and others, I want to check in with my in-studio compadres and friends here in studio with me at News Nation, the great, the awesome, the former Washington, D.C. special police officer and longtime TV star Tom Morris Jr., who I have not seen in person nope. since the show ended. It is great to have you here in the so studio. It is so good to be back with you, Dan. It really is, man. And, and uh, I'm looking forward to drinks and dinner, by the way, after Me the show. Too. Um, and joining us live from Tulsa, who will not be joining us for drinks and dinner because he is in Tulsa, Mr. Heartthrob himself, now former Tulsa Police Lieutenant, Mr. Sean Styx Larkin. Styx, great to see you, man. Great to see you, and man, guys, I'm so sorry I'm not there. I really, really, really wanted to be back uh, there in studio with both you guys. And, of course, the drinks and dinner afterwards was always part of our weekend, so I am missing that. So Tom and I are going to have some bourbon for you tonight. We will have extra bourbon, and maybe we'll even FaceTime you from the, uh, from the bar. Um, and uh, in. Right, exactly. For the homie who's not yeah. here. <laughs> All right. So... It is great to see you both. I notice I did a lot of former for both of you, so I'm not giving away what either of you are doing right now, because I want to spend some time uh, on that. Um, now, before we start, remember how we used to get live PD trending on Twitter every time oh, yeah. the show was on? I was thinking it might be fun to try to do that again just for old time's sake. Absolutely. So... You know, all of you out there, look, it's not us who do it. No. It's you guys. Live PD Nation. It's the nation. So we'll see if, uh, we'll see if that can happen. All right. So um, Tom Morris, Jr., you're in studio. You start first. What have you been up to? Uh, living my best life. I'm not sure if I'm retired, semi-retired, or on a really long vacation. <laughs> but I've been living my best life. I've been doing some volunteer work with the Red Cross. We need blood to be donated urgently. There's a real need for it. So I do some work with them. Um, I'm working on a film called PTSD 911 with a documentary filmmaker named Conrad Weaver. And we have an advisory board, and we're actually trying to shine attention on mental health for first responders. Oh, that's awesome. Um, and Mr. Larkin, I am more familiar with what you've been up to because I'm sort of involved in a lot of it. But uh, why don't, you, uh, why don't you bring us up to date? Let's see, I retired from the police department with just under 25 years uh, back in May of this year. So I miss my guys dearly and I, I miss chasing bad guys, but uh, some other opportunities in, <clears throat> excuse me, in life were out there. So uh, during this past year, we put out a book, thanks to some of your help there called Breaking Blue, uh, real life stories of cops falsely accused. I have started a podcast that anybody can find out there on Apple, Spotify, uh, YouTube, um, the Law and Crime Network, we air these episodes, and that is called Cocktails and Cocktails, um, where myself and a personal friend of mine that is a nurse, we have a weekly podcast. Um, basically, we're interviewing anybody and everybody that has somehow been involved in the criminal justice system. And I mean, we've got Dixie. people that have been to are prison. You, you, we've got... Sorry, go no, ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to... I was going to say, are you going to be mad at me if I disclose that we went back and forth for about three months over the name of that podcast? <laughs> I, I have weekly conversations with people about this, and everybody is blown away that you did not instantly love that name. Everybody. They right. cannot figure out yeah. how you did not love that name. It's a good name. You um, like the name, too? I liked it right away. Really? Mm -hmm. 
that's right. thank you, thank you, Tom. I've man, I've missed you, Tom. Um, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. So, so, uh, so I'm doing that, and uh, it's it's funny. I didn't know Tom was involved in some nonprofit stuff. I'm actually, uh, you know, I have my own nonprofit called Sticks Cares, um, but I'm also heavily involved with another one called Best Buddies, which is basically it's like Big Brothers Big Sisters, but for special needs adults and. Uh, even just this week, we were doing something with the Miss USA pageant that was here in Tulsa involving that. So uh, I've kind of jumped, uh, you know, uh, headfirst into that. And that's something I'm really, really passionate about right now. Awesome. All right. So now uh, let's take a, a look back for a minute. Tom, when you think about Live PD, what was the the most important thing to you or or what is your most enduring memory of Live PD? For me, it was being able to help recover 13 missing children with the help of our viewers, the LIPD Nation, and also helping law enforcement apprehend 34 fugitives. That, to me, was using precious minutes of airtime to really change people's lives. And, and just so all of you know, you know, who watched Live PD on a regular basis, you know, Tom was very involved behind the scenes on this stuff. This was a real passion for you. This was, I mean, you've been doing this sort of stuff your whole career. For almost three decades. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, each time there was somebody found, uh, there was a child found, et cetera, you could just see the joy in Tom's face uh, that, you know, there'd been some more success and that, uh, that we'd use this for good. Yeah. My late father, Reverend Morris, used to say, you're doing God's work. Yeah. Um, and what about with you, Sean? What is the, the, the most enduring memory for you of, uh, of Live PD? You know, it, it uh, for me personally, just still being an active officer during that entire time of being part of the show, both obviously out there on the street and then studio with you guys. It, it, and the term is generic, but it humanized the badge um, to two million people every Friday and Saturday night. You know, a lot of people have very small interactions with law enforcement throughout their lifetime, which is good, but it's usually in bad times. And they have... Uh, maybe this perspective of what a police officer does or their job or their personality, and, and they really don't know. So watching three hours live every Friday and Saturday, it allowed people from the comfort of their home to get to know the men and women that are working in law enforcement and that we're just like everybody else. We just happen to have a, a job that we drive a car with lights on it with a badge on our chest and a gun. And so for me, as I said, being an active officer during that time period, it was just so important. And, and still to this day, I have conversations almost daily with somebody on the street that just has an appreciation for that profession because of the show. Well, and I also want to say to all the people who come up to, to me and Tom and, and Sticks and say how much they miss Live PD, I assure you, uh, we feel the same way. I'll be talking about uh, the future later in the show, uh, where I'll be giving an update. I'll also be talking about this from a very personal perspective uh, for me. We got some questions that I already want to start before we go to Richland County and see, uh, see some of our friends uh, down there. Uh, Sticks, Roger from Morristown, Tennessee, wants to know, what is the most scary situation you've been in? Um, actually, before I answer that question, I got to say, when you say, you know, before we go to Richland County, man, it just reminds me of being on the show, hearing you say things like that. Yeah. Um, it really did. It, it yeah. does. It, yeah. it just reminds it really me of it. Um, no, but uh, I guess the scariest thing, two, there were two things. Um, one of them, of all things, I was on an alarm call and a dog, I swear, a German Shepherd came up behind me and barked literally right behind me when I had no idea it was there absolutely scared me to death. I, my hands were shaking when I got back in my car. Uh, but the other one was one of the, 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 you know, deadly force, the shootings I was involved with, um, had engaged in a, a gun battle with a suspect that had already shot a woman, had some children basically hostage, and then he barricaded himself in the room. And so the shooting was actually already over, but my team leader, when I was on the SWAT team at the time, was giving me the command that I was a shield guy that, hey, Sean, when we go through this door, you're the guy that's going at him to put this suspect down. And so to stand there and just mentally, you know, run through this after we just had this gun battle with the guy, uh, you know, it was, it was unnerving. So that was, uh, yeah. those are the two things for sure that stood out in my career. Tom Morris, uh, Jennifer from Aurora, Colorado. Hello, you wonderful people. You've been missed. This is mostly for Tom Morris. What is the status on the missing shooter from the tragic case where the young girl was shot getting ice cream? I believe it was in the D.C. area. I think that 
uh, one due to the innocence of the young lady and the horrible nature of the senselessness of this crime. Do you remember this case? Yes, uh, we profiled him relentlessly on Live PD Wanted. His name was Isaiah Murchison, and he was finally apprehended by the U.S. Marshals Fugitive Task Force in Washington, D.C. in August of 2020. All right, so they got him. And, and, uh, and Styx, um, we got one more. Let's see, let's go to Marcus via Twitter. Can you ask Styx if he thinks that uh, body cams have helped or hurt policing overall, and is he still active? We already told us we know you're active, but you're no longer active on the force. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, nope, no longer on the streets. But yes, I'm a, I'm a huge uh, supporter of body cams. You know, when they first came out, it was something new, something different. People in our profession or you know, some of them are apprehensive about it. But I think they've been in existence long enough now that we've seen they are nothing but a benefit, both to us in law enforcement as well as the public. Um, all right. Cocktails and cocktails. Apparently, somebody cut a, a little piece of sound from uh, from cocktails and cocktail. I can't even say it. I mean, I really can't. Uh, but that's but, why you, you know, don't like the name, I, maybe. Well, exactly. All right. Here's a little clip from uh, Sticks's cocktails and cocktails. We're broken up into three patrol divisions throughout the city. The north okay. side. That's where our gang problem, you know, for the most part is. That's where all, you know, statistically the most violent um, area of the city is, particularly with firearm-related crimes. And so if you're a young cop and you get up there, everybody says it's like one year working Adam Squad, which is deep north Tulsa, is the equivalent to three years anywhere else in the city. Because yep. the shootings you're going to go to, the car chases, the foot chases, you know, how you're going to interact with people. It's interesting stuff. Now, Sticks, um, when you were on the show, you would wear a polo shirt, a tight polo shirt that they kind of asked you to wear every day. Did somebody ask Those you to wear double tight t-shirts? Double XL. Yeah. Did, 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 <laughs> did somebody ask you to wear tight t-shirts on cocktails and cocktails, or was that just a personal choice? Again, this is so reminiscent of us being on the show together where I'm your, I'm your little stepchild. Right? I tell you. Uh, hey, well, well, He's a mischievous well, one. Well, Dan, I know you don't understand this, but when you're 6'4", 215 pounds with like oh. a 7 8% body oh. fat, shirts just, you can't help it. They're just no, tight. No, he didn't. So they're, they're just, it, well, wait, it's just, it, it's, wait, it's one of those problems I've had to live with since I was about 16. So I apologize. Wait. Wait, wait till I play. Do you remember the video I made with Garrow Brown? Speaking of uh, of big dudes. Yeah. Well, we're gonna show later in the show the home video I did with Garrow Brown, where I'm uh, giving some workout tips. And let's just say that uh, Mr. Brown decided to pay a visit. Um, all right, Tom and Sticks, don't go anywhere. Uh, we got a lot more to talk about, um, and uh, we're gonna catch up with more of the Live PD family. When we come back, we're going to go, as we said, we're going to be going live to Richland County. We're going to Warwick, Rhode Island. Look, it's in Dejas in the house. Coming right back. All right, now we've caught up with Sticks and Tom, and Tom's still right here. It is so nice to it have him good. in the house. With Dan. Um, but what about some of your favorite officers? I know that so many of you have questions for them. Joining us now, deputies Garrow Brown, Danny Brown, and Addie Perez from the Richland County Sheriff's Department and retired Warwick, Rhode Island police officer, Jill Marshall. It is so good to see all of you. Wow, I have not, um, I have not talked to any of you since the show ended and I'm so thrilled to see you guys. It, Brings back such good memories to have uh, to have all of you here. Um, let me let me ask uh, Danny just to start. Danny, how have things been there without live PD? So uh, I got a couple more Friday and Saturday nights off, so it, that's kind of plus. But <laughs> we we still constantly get get asked on the streets about uh, how things are going and how much they miss live PD. They miss the show. So it's still showing a lot of benefits on the street. We still get asked about it constantly. And uh, anything that starts that conversation is positive. And Addie, you know, you know, I know it's your birthday this week. You know how? Because somehow everyone on Twitter knows that it's your birthday. And they were like, make sure you wish Addie Perez a happy birthday. So Addie, happy birthday. Um, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I'm halfway to 30, closer to 40. <laughs> Uh, I got I got specific questions for all of you, but uh, but Garrow, how are you holding up these days? And uh, 
I assume you're still uh, getting a lot of inquiries about live PD as well? I am. Uh, like Captain Brown said, pretty much not a day goes by that someone doesn't ask us. So uh, we're still involved. You know, we still get a lot of questions about the show. It's, it's still a lot of fun. So. And Jill Marshall, you're retired. How's that going? It's very surreal, and I can't believe how fast time goes by. 20 years and done. And I'm sure that the streets are missing. Did you, did you want to, Tom, just point it at you? Go ahead. Feel I free, Tom. Carol said Captain Brown. Last time we oh. talked to him, he was Lieutenant Danny Brown. That is true. Captain Brown. That's a, not, thank you for that observation, Tom. Captain Brown, you want to tell us about the promotion? Yeah, uh, bless. Worked for a great department and uh, dropped another bug in your ears. Daryl Brown is now Sergeant Brown, and Addy Perez mm -hmm. is now Master Deputy Perez. So uh, uh, the winds of trade have been good to us uh, over the last year. <laughs> I love it. I love to hear it. Um, let me. All right. Let me get to some of the questions. We got so we got literally thousands of questions for all of you guys. So we had to sort of try and narrow them down as much as we could. The, the live PD nation is still out there strong. Um, so, you know, so let me, this is for Addie Perez from James on Twitter. Curious if now as a mother, it has helped Addie as an officer or has being an officer helped her as a mother? You know, interesting, um, it has. Uh, we actually showed up to the scene where there was a child involved and nobody knew how to do formula on a baby. And everybody's like, well, you had a baby, so take care of it. <laughs> um, and I knew I was like a master at dealing with the formula. And uh, I was like, no, he did up 45 seconds. And I, I, it was a little weird for me, but I was on full blown mommy mode and I took care of this young child that was less than a year old and I got him fed, I got him changed and um, I actually appreciate Aww. knowing that I have the experience to do that now uh, because if it was me before, I would have no clue. <laughs> oh, look, I love these pictures. These are awesome. Thank you for sharing <laughs> those with us, by the way. Uh, Danny Brown, you know the, you. the same questions that we've been getting about you since the beginning of the show, we're still getting about you. And we got so many of them that I had to pull one of them. Catherine from Georgetown, South Carolina. Danny, did you run track or other sports that gave you the skills to catch your suspect so quickly? Because as we know, Danny Brown always seemed to be on the run. I think the cameras make me about 10 miles per hour faster. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, I, ran track. I ran track in high school, uh, played baseball in high school and college, and um, try to stay on my feet, really do. But if you're not in shape nowadays on the streets, it's not the place where you're really not. So, um, honestly, the camera guys, I, I think they really helped out in making me look good catching people. <laughs> <laughs> Garo Brown, um, this is Chad from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. What have you done since Live PD? Also, and this is the main question, since you're being such a big guy, how do you connect with little kids in making them so comfortable to talk to you? Well, I, I was wondering how come no one asked me if I run track. I mean, I don't. <laughs> well, I don't <laughs> because you know what? Because we saw you run, Garo, and we know yeah, that, that there's no track team that's taking that man on their team. <laughs> Good point. Good point. Uh, well, um, what I've been doing, um, just working. You know, kind of like Captain Brown said, uh, we all got uh, promotions in our department, so it just opens up a new avenue. You know, I do a lot of administrative stuff more than on the street like I used to be. So it's been an adjustment for me. So I'm just getting used to that. Um, you know, so uh, as far as, you know, getting, you know, being the size that I am and, and you know, communicating with kids, what I normally do, I'll just let them climb on me like a tree. It's what they normally seem like they love to do. <laughs> I'll just hold well, out my you know, arms and let them swing around. To give a and, sense. And to give a sense of how big Garo is, I want to play this video that Garo and I did. I don't know if you remember this, Garo. Uh, back in the day when you were at the studio, when you were at the studio with me, um, let's play it. Hey, Live PD Nation. Time for your Live PD fitness tip of the day. I always say you got to do a combination of aerobics and weights. <clears throat> you got to do your bench press. And of course, you got to do your curls. Because you want to be really fit, you got to make sure you're doing those big weights, the heavy weights. That's what I'm talking about! <laughs>
<laughs> That's a question. Oh, oh, I'm gonna miss those days. That was those were the days. And to be clear, I'm not a big guy, but I'm also not that small. That's how big that man is. Just I'm just I just want to be clear. Because it makes me look you sh- tiny. You should try walking uh, through For the record, forward. Dan is ripped. Yeah. And that's a fact. <laughs> um, all right. I, I got I got to get a question in for um, uh, for Jill Marshall. Jill, let me, I'm going to go to number 20 here. Um, and this is Charles from North Canton, Ohio. What is the most annoying type of call that you had to deal with? Least favorite, non-emergency call that you were required to investigate but wish you didn't? Oh, boy. The most annoying call. Let me think. (laughs) Well, (laughs) I have to say, maybe little things like, I know you guys remember I was on that call with the goat. Remember the goat running around? (laughs) Oh, yeah, the goat. (laughs) Right. Right. Blocking the street, roaming around. (laughs) I would say calls like that are a little, I'm like, wow, they really call the police? to get these goats together and bring them back home. But you know what? Right. It is what it is, and you do what you're supposed to well, do. And, and it was a lot of fun. And the thing about you, the thing about you is you had a special way of communicating with people, no matter how big or small, no matter how dangerous or minor the call was, you were so good at connecting with people. De-escalation, we always talk about that. When there were some very serious situations, we always watched you. Uh, do that, which was uh, amazing. Let me take a quick break here. I'm going to tease one thing that's coming up, which is for those of you who don't know that former El Paso officer Andrea Zendejas is now, well, she's not an officer and she's, um, how do I say this? I don't know. She is, Sticks, Sticks, how should I characterize what she's doing now? She's a fan favorite. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, fan favorite, fan favorite, fan favorite, and by subscription only. Coming right back. <laughs> we are back with our special live PD reunion show, and guess what? You guys already have us trending on Twitter at number five. We're back, at least for tonight. Um, but I'll have the update later in the show. Um, Tom Morris, Garrow Brown, Danny Brown, Addie Perez, Jill Marshall, Sean Sticks Larkin. The family is back. Um, all right, so I want to read this, first of all, to the Richland folks. We got a lot of comments and, and questions about Richland County. Number 22, Sally from Richland County says, I don't have a question, but I have a comment. Richland County is an awesome law enforcement team. I really miss Live PD. And the thing I like about that is she lives there. You know, it's really not. I mean, it's fine for people outside of Richland County to say, oh, yeah, I love them, but they're never getting pulled over by you guys. When someone from Richland County (laughs) is saying how much they love you, I think that is the ultimate um, compliment. All right. Let me ask. Let me throw this one to Danny. Lori from Minnesota, number 14. How has the activity been at the hotel with blue doors in Richland County, even though it sounds like those doors have been painted a different color? The Palmetto Inn, of course. Uh, they uh, they no longer have the sticks uh, suite there, so that's that's a good thing. <laughs> um, but they, <laughs> the uh, the activity seems to have moved on to other hotels. Uh, yeah, they, yeah. They, yeah. <laughs> the activity has kind of dropped off the books there, and it seems like some of the uh, people has transported themselves to other hotels. So now we're having issues at a couple oh, of other hotels. And- and I'm sure I'm sure sticks is sticks. I'm sure your VIP card will work at the other places as well. <laughs> Nationwide, baby. You know, Nationwide. <laughs> Go ahead, what? One of our best moments on Live PD in the early going was when they had that guy handcuffed behind his back and he took off running and dove headfirst through the plexiglass window into a motel that, that was room to get at his girlfriend. Da- Danny, were you on that scene? Uh, I was not. That was uh, sort of oh. Tapler at the time. Tapler, right? Yeah, right. it was not right. happening as well. So that right. went viral. People couldn't believe. That, it. Oh, I couldn't believe it either. Yeah. 
I mean, that was in the early days when, when we were like... <laughs> season one. Season one, I, I believe. I mean, I remember when we were sitting on set, yeah. watching that thing happen, we're like, that guy just jumped through the window. <laughs> Head first, handcuffed behind his back. <laughs> to, to try to to try to get at this this mm -hmm. woman this who had yeah. a restraining order mm -hmm. yeah. out against him. Mm -hmm. um, Sticks, I can tell you wanted to say fan. something. Right there. Sticks, <laughs> by the way, Danny, Sticks is still annoyed, oh, sure. just so you know. He's still shaking his head. <laughs> he still feels <laughs> like a, like the, the, the victim. So, Sticks, do you, would you like to make a quick response before we go to break? No, that is. this is part of the things that I missed about the show. The show had all the excitement, but this banter that we all got to have, I mean, it, it's what made it so fun for us and the viewers. <laughs> But I will say, Danny hit it right on the head. I actually did take a trip through South Carolina, and I actually did stop at that hotel, uh, had a picture. Uh, there was no stick suite, I promise you. But uh, good times. Yeah. That's because they don't have those at motels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there were no, there were no rooms true. that were big enough for Mr. Larkin, Mr. Larkin's liking. Um, all right, let's take a, uh, a break. When we come back, we're actually going to do something a, a little more serious because we're going to highlight some of the heroics of officers captured on body cam. We do it every night here on the show. But the one we want to show you coming back from break involves canines. And then later we'll talk to Andrea Zendejas. And I'll give you an update on Live PD. It's all coming up. Before we go back to our Live PD reunion and talk to more of the officers and my compadres from the show, you know, every night here on Dan Abrams Live on News Nation, we feature police body cam video showing the dangers officers face every day across the country. And it's usually Styx who takes us through the harrowing videos. And so, Styx, let's, uh, let's do this one. Um, and it involves canines. Deputies in Volusia County, Florida, tracking a carjacking suspect through a field. The suspect opens fire. And I want to warn you, you, some of the people may find what happened next to be incredibly disturbing. The suspect shot canine axe in the face. The bullet went down the dog's throat, ended up in his stomach. Deputy A.J. Walsh put axe in his car as the sheriff's department called ahead to a vet. And while axe was being rushed to life-saving surgery, the search for the suspect continued. Deputies close in. The suspect ends up firing more shots, this time hitting canine endo in the face and paw. But even though the dog was shot, he was relentless and had to be pulled off the suspect as deputies arrested him. Now, both the dogs survived and recovered. We're gonna show you that in a moment. But Sean, take us through from the officer's perspective here what we saw. You know, all the people that watched uh, Live PD, um, you know, the officers themselves and all the different dogs, I think we had, you know, Carmack, uh, with his dog, uh, Peeny, Craig Peeny, Mile, yep. um, you know, uh, you know the various officers had their dogs. They were huge fan favorites, and they are a part of our profession. Um, you know, yes, they're quote unquote a tool for law enforcement officers to use, but they're our partners. Um, they're part of part of the team, and these dogs are out there doing their job in these incidents. You know, facing the danger. And as you just mentioned, on one, uh, you know, a, attempt at an apprehension, two different dogs are shot. So you yep. watching this body cam video, you see how difficult it is for the officers that are having to transport their injured partners to save their lives. And it turns out one of the dogs, one of the canines, had actually been shot before. I talked to both of them, and I want to show this. Let's let's show the video. I want to first show the the, the images of the handlers and their canines, if we can move up um, and, uh, and show the pictures. Um, because Deputy Walsh and Axe, the, um, the dog rushed to surgery on the right. Deputy Brett Whitson and Endo, the second dog shot, are here on the left. Endo had a paw bandaged. Um, Endo had been also shot in the line of duty before. Here's what he said. The audience watching this is so relieved. This is not as 
his first run in with a bullet. He was shot in 2015 as well. So he's a, some people say that he's, he's not a canine and he's a, a feline because he's got nine lives. So you saw there talking about um, nine lives. Tom, we got about uh, 30 seconds. You want to make a comment there? A lot of people don't know that wounding or killing a canine is the same as killing or wounding an officer, an actual human officer. The penalty can be just as severe. Yep. Um, and I know, as we know from Live PD, that the Live PD audience cared enormously Absolutely. about the canines. Mm -hmm. um, and it was so, I would never have shown this video if these, both these canines had not been so great, if, the, if both the canine handlers hadn't come on the show, talked to me um, when, uh, after they had recovered. But wow, what a story. Let's take a, one more break. Um, when we come back, Officer Andrea Zendejas, remember the bun of justice? Well, she's traded her El Paso police badge for a new line of work that is just as exciting and unpredictable. And apparently, she makes a lot more money doing it. And it's subscription only. She's going to give us an update up next. Thanks to fans like many of the thanks to fans like you, many of the officers featured on Live PD became very well known, both in their communities and throughout the nation. People would literally travel to police departments to try to meet the officers. And one of the officers who really resonated with fans was former El Paso officer Andrea Zendejas. During her time on Live PD, Zendejas became known as the Bun of Justice, thanks to her unflappable style and signature hairstyle. But since she left the force, she has done more than just let her hair down. She has traded in her police blues for far less clothing, where she describes herself as, quote, plus size, big booty, gun slinging, tatted lingerie loving, all American woman. Yes, officers in Dejas actually left the force this summer and started her own OnlyFans page, which is a subscription service primarily known for, well, let's ask her. Joining us now is the Bun of Justice, now Justice of Buns herself, Andrea Zendejas. Good, good to see you. Uh, thanks for coming on the show. Appreciate, appreciate it. Um, I have to admit, and I know this is going to sound like I'm making it up, I didn't know about this service. Um, tell us about uh, this service and uh, what you're offering. Well, so I just took something that was a hobby and I actually turned it into a full working company for me. <laughs> so um, I just uh, modeled plus size lingerie um, on the site and people really like it, women and men. So uh, it turned out really good. And, um, I also and, have a full and you functioning. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but you guys actually got in trouble at your department because it overlapped with the end of your time at the department, right? Yes. Tell us about it. Um, just um, basically, they didn't agree with what I was doing, and um, you know, um, that was it. They didn't they didn't agree with what I was doing. I was already leaving. Um, so can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. We hear you okay. great. We hear you. We see you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So, um, they weren't, they didn't, they were in disagreement with what I was doing, which is fine. I was leaving the department anyway. Um, it just so happened a hobby turned out to be a, uh, a full-time working job for me. Um, <laughs> I don't do uh, are you having crazy. fun? I, I model uh, plus size lingerie, and um, I was able to start my own company. So, um, and that's going to be audacityintimates.com, and uh, it's up and running, doing doing really well, and uh, I'm enjoying life. <laughs> I'm doing what I want to do finally. <laughs> Tom Morris, do you ever miss police work? I, I do sometimes. Um, I miss my guys a lot. I actually had a lot of guilt. Um, I had a lot of guilt for leaving them because they were like, they were like my kids. They were like my, my children. They were much younger than me. So I tried to like um, take care of them, I guess you could say. I miss them. Stick. That's pretty much it. <laughs> 
Sticks, I know you're very familiar with OnlyFans. Um, what do you make of this? Wow. Uh, I am familiar with it because I was very fortunate to have a full interview on the uh, podcast, Cocktails and Cocktails, with Miss Indejas. So, uh, nice try there, Dan. Uh, now, listen, honestly, all, all seriousness, I did. I, get, I got to talk to her. Uh, we chatted for about an hour. We've kept in touch. Um, it was a fantastic interview. You know, she goes into detail, the whole process of her getting into it. And, hey, you know, this is America, man. Everybody, you want to get out Look, and try something new, I'm all for it. Go for it. And, and, and I love the fact it's a, it's a subscription service, Andrea, so that they have yes. to pay to be able to see the photos, right? Because I know that because I actually went online to try to look at some of your pictures <laughs> and I realized, oh, wait a sec, I got to pay to play. And he's too cheap <laughs> to pay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so is News Nation paying for this? News Nation yeah, yeah, is going to get yeah. a bill next yeah, month. News Nation now has a subscription to, to a number of, <laughs> that are well beyond Andrea's and Dejas. And so when I get asked about those expenses, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attribute them all to Andrea's and Dejas. Yeah, you, your, yeah, your per diem won't cover it, Dan. Your per diem won't cover it, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But, but, um, but uh, you know, do you still get, um, Andrea, do you still get recognized from Live PD? I, I assume you get recognized from this service as well. But do you still get recognized <laughs> from Live PD and people still appreciate your work there? So funny story with that. I, I moved to Wilmington. I completely left El, El Paso and Texas. So I moved to Wilmington, North Carolina. And um, I was at the drive through at Dunkin' Donuts this morning <laughs> getting coffee. And the girl handed me my coffee and she's like, I, I know you. I was like, I don't, <laughs> I don't think so. She was like, oh my gosh, were you an officer? And I was like, yes. <laughs> she was like, I loved you. So that's only the first time it's happened since I've been in Wilmington, but it, it still does happen. <laughs> well, I want to tell you, when I first heard that you were doing this subscription service, I actually didn't believe it. I thought that someone was making a joke and that they were like, you know, Andrea's in Dejas now, has a private subscription service where she puts up pictures of herself um, in, you know, somewhat um, revealing clothing. And I said, <laughs> come <It's> on. Lingerie. <laughs> I, lingerie, lingerie. Um, and I said, I said, Zendejas? Zendejas? <laughs> and look at, we're showing, we're showing the pictures there as to the, uh, should we call it the before and after? Yeah. Um, but, uh, but look, you look great, you sound great. I'm so glad you're happy. Um, let's take uh, one more break uh, here, because, oh, real quick. A lot of people don't know, Styx once worked at Victoria's Secret. Oh, <laughs> that I it. did. <laughs> yes. That's fact. All right. That, that, <laughs> all right. There's a fun fact for you right there. Uh, all right. Coming up, you've all been asking, is Live PD coming back? I'm going to give you an update of this. Okay, so I know that many of you are here for the update on Live PD, so here it is. At the beginning of this year, I said on Twitter that I felt confident that Live PD or something like it would be back in 2021. I recognize that provided concrete hope for those of you who have been eagerly awaiting the show's return. No one was more disappointed or frustrated when Live PD was taken off the air than me. And I desperately want to see the show or something just like it return with police so often dominating the headlines, I believe showing a national audience the more day-to-day -day aspects of what it's like to be a police officer in America is more important than ever. And that's why I do it on this show on News Nation every day, showcasing body cam footage of officers in harrowing situations. Now, I'm sorry to say that it turns out I was wrong about 2021, but I want to be really clear. It was not just wishful thinking. I've been approached by numerous networks to discuss doing a live PD type show with many of the same departments. So I was confident something would come through. So maybe I've lost some credibility here based on my 2021 prediction. But there are a lot of conversations going on about bringing the show back. And I feel very good about its chances in the near term. Now, I don't own live PD. I didn't produce it. I was a producer, but I wasn't the production company. But I'm feeling good about where we are. And every one of the conversations includes you. All of your passion 
as part of the live PD nation is always part of the conversation. I know how committed all of you are to the community and to having the show come back. So let me get personal with you for a moment. Before Live PD, I've been on the air in very high profile roles as a national news anchor and correspondent for over 20 years. But nothing in my professional career has compared to being a part of Live PD. We became a family. Those of us on the set, the producers, the crews, both in studio and those who are out with the officers. And of course, most importantly, all of you. Together, you, we, had something truly special that I had never had in my professional life. I want it back. So rest assured that I will continue to fight the fight as best I can. In the meantime, Styx will continue to analyze police body cam footage for me here on this show on News Nation, and I hope you can join us here. Tom, I have to say, being back together, it's been great. Right? Like we never, never left, you know? Television is a fickle mistress, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm so proud and happy and grateful for what we accomplished during those four years in 298 episodes, and uh, we'll see what the future holds. Styx, final thought on this? No, I, honestly, you stole a lot of the things right out of your mouth, I was going to say. First of all, obviously, the banter that we have, I've, I've referred to it several times. It's great to be back on here with you, uh, Dan and Tom. It's fantastic to see all the officers. We got to see every Friday and Saturday night on duty. But, you know, politics, the, uh, the pandemic and policing, those have been the three biggest topics over the last year and a half since we've been off the air. And what a better uh, show than something like Live PD to come back and let the people at home see that police profession day in and day out. And I will say that, boy, if, if we do a show like Live PD, it's got to include our friends from Richland County because, you know, you guys were always um, very professional. We loved watching you. I love seeing you guys. Um, I don't know. Addie, I've got, I've got 30 seconds left. A final thought? Can you hear it cut off? Oh, cut that's off. all right. You got cut off. All right. Um, anyway. Shout out to Sheriff off. Leon Lett in Richland County. That's right. One of the best sheriffs in all of America. Yeah, no, Richland County, I, I guess they, they lost us there a little bit. But uh, we, we miss you guys. And uh, even mm -hmm. though uh, Andrea Zendejas and, and Jill Marshall are no longer officers, uh, watching you out there uh, was great. And it was really important. That does it for our live PD reunion. If you missed any of it, We'll have an encore presentation tomorrow. News Nation Prime starts right now. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.